worldly sorrow and worldly repentance. Worldly repentance is I'm sorry because I got caught. Worldly repentance is I feel I feel something. I feel bad. I shouldn't be doing this. Some of us will even have an emotional experience down at the altar, but there's no real heart turning to the Lord. So there's this worldly repentance that we've allowed versus a godly sorrow where we allow the presence and power of the Holy Spirit to bring deep conviction of sin, where we allow weeping and wailing. Blessed are those who mourn. Do you know that's not talking about the funeral? It's talking about blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who see how out of touch they are with their own need of God and they weep over their carnal state. Where are the weepers in the church today? David Wilkerson called it agony. Where are the men and women who are agonizing in the place of prayer over the deception and over the pollution in the church just 20 years ago? If someone was living a lifestyle that wasn't pleasing to God, for the most part, they wouldn't even come to church. They consciously knew my lifestyle choices don't line up with the word of God. It's not that way anymore. What's happening is on Friday, we're at the club doing things the devil loves. And on Sunday, we're raising our hands saying, all hail King Jesus. There, there's, a, there's a lack of truth telling in the church because we're afraid of offending people. And I want to declare to you that the gospel is not about winning friends and gaining influence. The gospel is not a salt and pepper shaker that adds flavor to your life. The gospel is the life. Jesus is the way and he is the truth. I believe that biblical marriage is between one man and one woman. Folks, we need a revival of sanity. This is not about being mean. This is not about being harsh. This is not about being hangry. This is about God looking for a people with clean hands and pure hearts that he can pour out his spirit once again. There is a glory that God desires to send. But if there is a crack in our character, the glory that God sends will not bless you. It will crush you. A generation, we want the spotlight. We want the book deal. We want the television interview. We want the microphone. But if there are skeletons in your closet that you're hiding, the very spotlight that you crave is the very spotlight that's going to expose you. If you've been in any amount of revival or any amount of glory, it's amazing and it's awful. The glory of God, when it comes, it has a way of filling us up and then emptying us out. When we really begin to pursue the deeper realms of glory, we can't have a generation wanting to slay Goliath who doesn't have a history with a lion or a bear. We need a generation willing to win in the mundane. We need a generation of men willing to overcome the Goliath of pornography before they get married because she's not going to fix that issue. This, there, there's, a, there's a, still a pandemic going on. It's, it's, it's more deadly than the virus. It's wiping out children. It's wiping out marriages. It's destroying this generation. It was Steve Hill who said, treating sin casually creates casualties. I've preached so many times when I visited here on the Jezebel spirit. There is a Jezebelic spirit at work in the American church that is silencing the voice of true prophets who have a mandate to confront wickedness and sin. There is a demonic doctrine of demons called false grace that has crept in the church that is allowing people licensed to sin, believing that it's not a big deal. If sin is not a big deal, then why did God send Jesus? I've mentioned to you guys before, I preach at larger churches than this one. The pastors take me in the back and tell me, please don't preach on sin. Don't talk about repentance. You can talk about the supernatural. I remember being at a large prophetic conference and I'm preaching from the word of God. And here's what they say to me. Put down your Bible and prophesy to us. It's amazing in the prophetic movement. Everybody wants a word of knowledge about your next house, but no one wants a word of knowledge about your sin. Everybody wants a word of wisdom about your next upgrade, and no one wants a word of wisdom about how to get out of what you got into. Everybody wants a discernment about who's your spouse, but apparently we can't discern the evil we're invested in right now. There's a holy confrontation because God loves us too much the way that he found us. 
I believe in the glory that's coming. I believe in the revival and the third great awakening that God wants to send. But I'm telling you, I've been in these movements for long enough traveling around the country where there is a major disconnect in the minds and the hearts of this generation concerning personal holiness and the pursuit of the Lord Jesus detached from an outpouring. We don't want to talk about holiness. We just want to talk about grace. Well, here's the problem. The angels and the living creatures, the song that they're singing in heaven is not grace, grace, grace. They're saying holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And, and let me just, just park here for a minute. I'm not talking about miserable holiness. Some of you have already tuned me out because you think I'm trying to shackle you to legalism. Listen, the call to deeper levels of consecration always looks like legalism to people who aren't in love. See, I believe that there's a place of encountering the love of God that delivers us from inferior lovers and pursuits. When you begin to lock eyes with the man whose eyes burn with fire, it begins to challenge those other lovers in your life. And it becomes easier and easier to sow into the spirit so that you can reap of the spirit. God doesn't want you struggling with sin like you've struggled for decades. He wants to introduce you to your new creation identity that the old has passed and the new has come you're a new creature you have died with Christ that old man no longer lives in Christ it's no longer you won't it's no longer you can't but you won't talk to people about sin well brother I just can't I can't quit looking I can't keep watching is the blood of Jesus powerful or not that type of thinking is an assault on the finished work of the cross at Calvary. You need to begin to renew your mind and take captive of those thoughts and make them obedient to Jesus. We don't need to make provision for the flesh. We need to make provision for the Holy Spirit. Come on, there is joy in the presence of God forevermore. There are pleasures at his right hand. But I'm telling you, the lie that this generation believes is this. The act of sin, I want to give you Bible truth. The act of sin is not the gaining of pleasure, but it's actually the loss of it. Do you know that you were born for eternal intimacy with God? That you were created and woven into your DNA was a hunger for God himself and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? I'm telling you, days are going to come to the church where we're going to stop wondering what we're missing out on out there. And days are coming where people out there are going to wonder what they're missing out on in here. And we're going to sacrifice and we're going to give and we're going to be thrilled about it. It's actually going to be exciting. You realize we can't get people saved because they're looking at you?